welcome back to Shine Time Coaching. I'm Jenny Robertson and I am the tarot reader and life coach behind Shine Time Coaching. This week, welcome, and this week I wanted to speak to you a little bit about creating physical altars and sacred spaces. Um, we are talking about within the context of Aquarius season and looking at all things uh, connecting and healing and um, maybe even considering how you ritualize some of your uh, habits and making that sort of the healing habits that you're working on a bit more sacred to yourself, then one of the things ways you can do that is by engaging in your physical space with things like altars and sacred spaces. Um, next week, I'm going to expand a little bit more and talk about the concept of a living altar. Ooh, I know, curious, um, but you'll need to wait for next week for that one. So recently, with my own musings within Aquarius season and my own work within my, my own practice with tarot, as well as how I'm working with a lot of individuals when I'm coaching with the tarot with them, um, I've been thinking a lot about how we signify to ourselves what is important and what is sacred. How do we identify are sacred things, right? Um, one of the most obvious or more obvious ways is around the things that represent what matters most to us. Sorry, I've got little notes and they're just not working anyways. Um, what matters most to us and the things that symbolize, you know, who we are. Uh, what do we want? What do we need? Um, what are we here for? Where do we come from? Um, you know, things that kind of ground us in our past and our present. And of course, the things that represent what we are wanting to move towards or what we are um, expanding into. Um, often we place these things, these items, these representations um, in places and spaces that are important to us. That's quite a normal thing to do. Um, many more of us are creating home altars or sacred spaces and um, this isn't a new practice by any means but it certainly has been growing as a way to connect to our spirituality um, especially outside of more organized religion <laughs> but that is a topic for another day um, so many of us are kind of reclaiming a sort of um, a sense of spirituality or spiritual practices that for ourselves um, and it's a really lovely thing to see there's many people that I've noticed um, through conversations online and in person who are just wanting to develop a little bit more of a sacred um, or spiritual connection to themselves. And, and they want, you know, they want to connect to something a little bit deeper and a little bit bigger. So I understand that very well. Um, the newsletter crew, those of you who are um, part of the email list will have received a downloadable freebie in the email this last, that went out last week. Um, and I'm gonna show it now. Boop. And in it, I shared that you can see that I had shared some ideas for creating an altar or sacred space of your own. Um, this is a great reminder to head over to the website, shinetimecoaching.com, after you watch this <laughs> video and maybe consider signing up to the newsletter. Um, and maybe even, you know, while you're thinking about these things, you might want to subscribe to this channel. I don't know, maybe. Um, but yes, there's a really lovely downloadable about sort of the elements and things you might want to consider if you are thinking about creating your own altar or sacred space. Um, I guess first we should get into the why behind it. Why an altar? Why a sacred space? Uh, well, the definition of an altar, and I'm paraphrasing here, <laughs> it is a raised or flat top or a structure of some kind or place that serves as the center for worship or ritual, right? Um, it's where people maybe go to signify something important, where we honor what is important to us, where, you know, we sig what signifies who we are, um, where we come from, what we want to expand or release. Like there's things that we place on altars that are, that these are important signifiers to us, right? Um, we like to have a space that allows us to connect with ourselves, right? We all feel drawn to that um, and are more sort of holistic or, or spiritual practices. And we want somewhere where we can feel peaceful and where there's ease and maybe a bit of quiet time, right? This all makes so much sense. Like it makes so much sense. Um, 
And we all kind of probably do this to some extent. We put up photos of our loved ones. We bring in found items from, you know, outside. Um, we place them on windowsills and bookshelves. We have maybe a favorite seat or place to rest in the house. Um, we light candles, we light fires, we collect special items that reflect our culture and our heritage and our ancestry. These are all sort of part of that, right? These are things that we're kind of often naturally um, drawn to. My son does this automatically. He collects nature things, he collects like favorite things, Pokemon cards, um, family photos, drawings that friends gave him, and he puts them in like wee collections around the house and they're usually on a window ledge or a little bookshelf, right? This is just thing that kids do. It's like little collections, things that to them are extremely important and meaningful and that signify certain things in their in their life up to this point. And putting all these things in one space or place is creating an altar. <laughs> Sorry if this is news to you and you're realizing, oh, maybe I'm a lot more spiritual than I thought. <laughs> um, yeah, so my altar, which I'll maybe take a little video of at the end to show you. Um, first of all, I must say there's no wrong way to alter. There's no wrong way. And actually, we'll get into this a wee bit more about being intuitively um, drawn to certain things and how you set it up. So my altar came about exactly that way. Um, many folks, like many folks, I have a real mistrust of organized religion for many, many reasons, historically and personal. Um, it's not the people. <laughs> I must say that, I suppose, for the most part anyways. It's definitely not the people and it's not a many of the sort of beliefs and core values around um various religions and the practices you know that's not my issue but it's more the organization around the organizations that they are and the historical aspects and and things like that so um but also um being agnostic and atheist isn't for me um and i think there's somewhere in between <laughs> i definitely think there's another option um and i feel deeply that there is definitely something more than we can know and more than we can see um, and I crave deeply to be more connected to that, as well as my ancestry, as well as those unseen folks and guides who I feel, um, who like to hang about me <laughs> and who support me, um, who I call my well counsel after a term that I learned from Lindsay Mack. Um, again, I'll, that's another chat for another day, talking about well counsels, because my well counsel is actually a really important part of my tarot practice and how I read for other people. So I will get into that another day. But um, I also feel deeply connected to and I thrive in nature and the elements and my connections um, to my Celtic and Scandi heritages. Heritages? heritages? That sounds like a weird word. Um, but I'm definitely drawn to these things because they are part of the fabric of who I am. Um, so when I was starting to decorate the windowsill, this is what I'm looking at just now. That's why my eyes keep drifting that way as my altars and my eye line. <laughs> so when I started to decorate my windowsill in my office with family photos, you know, my monthly tarot cards, my there's candles and my crystals and found items that my that my son has given me or that I found that have meaning to me. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, there's I, I'm, I've got a little cauldron to burn um, for saining, which is cleansing, um, burning, cleansing herbs. Um, I was feeling pulled to tend to, to tend to it and to sit with it and be with it. I suddenly realized I had created an altar <laughs> and it felt weird about that for a long time. It felt weird to call it that. It felt weird to admit it um, or to claim it as a practice for myself. But that is often the way with things that we have been disconnected from um, and when the things that we kind of find our way back to. And it can feel weird to sort of say them out loud and to admit to them. I wasn't encouraged to explore these things growing up. Um, one parent I suspect is agnostic um, and the other is a very reluctant and then I suppose lapsed Catholic. Um, but the pull and the drive to explore and to find my place in my own spirituality with my own spirituality has been really, really strong. Um, it is definitely sort of a reclaiming um, and a wee bit of a homecoming for me. Um, and it's also been a practice in building up trust in my intuition, how I create my altar, how I tarot, how I connect with my well counsel, how I practice small rituals, um, how I 
connect with myself and consider myself, um, how I tend to and connect with my, in my relationships, um, even how I tend to and care for my home have all been wee ways that I've learned to trust myself. Um, and that, you know, ways to learn that I, to trust that I am already spiritual. I already know how to be spiritual. Um, so there's a lot of thing, you know, a lot of reading and stuff that I feel drawn to. There's a lot of practices I feel drawn to. Um, and I'm trusting myself that there's a reason behind those. If you've been feeling pulled to explore these things for yourself, if you're noticing like little tugs and pulls towards some ways of sort of signifying to yourself that there is more to connect to, um, letting yourself create a wee altar in an intuitive way is a really wonderful way to explore that and a great place to start. Um, and it's things like just considering what feels sacred to you, uh, what items feel precious, comforting, inspiring, hopeful, poignant, what, what feels that way to you? Um, what feels like healing reminders and considerations? What symbolizes who you are and who you've come from or where you've come from? Um, which aspects of your ancestral cultures are you drawn to? Uh, what visual reminders support you best, right? Those are just some things to consider um, in how you want to explore be having an altar, how you create your altar, how you tend to your altar. They're really lovely, lovely things to consider. Um, I will make a little note here <laughs> about a little thing called cultural appropriation. Um, sometimes when we don't know much about our own cultures uh, or where we're, you know, when we're when we're just starting out um, and we're exploring various forms of spirituality for ourselves, um, we can find, borrow um, or use symbols and practices that maybe really aren't ours to use. Um, and it's no biggie, right? If, it's your, if you're unaware and it's something you don't realize that you're doing, immediately you're allowed to change and adapt and pivot, right? I've been there, been there, done that. Um, we've all been there and done that, right? <laughs> what I would suggest is that anything you are feeling pulled towards using or displaying or practicing, do a little more research um, around it. One of the examples I can think of for myself is um, the practice of burning and, you know, herbs and things like that. I'm very, became very popular, obviously, is saging, especially the use of white sage, which isn't, um, now using garden sage that you grow in your garden or that's from local gardens, fine, right? But a pro using white sage, which is quite sacred to certain cultures, as particularly um, the indigenous cultures, um, in North America and other parts of the world, that is maybe not an appropriate way to cleanse your space because not only is it putting a strain on the resource, but it's just not something that um, is for me and I realize is not connected to anything culturally for me. So it doesn't benefit me to use that. And actually it's a really small thing for me to adjust. So I don't need to use that. Um, I then started finding local folks who created bundles, burning bundles, and it's things with like rosemary, things that are native to um, Europe or Scotland in particular. I've now found a really lovely person who has, creates um, burning herbs from like things like juniper that are very native to Scotland. And in Scotland, I found out there is a practice of burning um, herbs, cleansing herbs and things like that called seining. So doing a little tiny bit of research, I could find some practices that are local to where I live and uh, are connected to my ancestry that I can practice that move me away from using a practice that isn't mine to use, right? So, and it's not, it, I really don't think we need to feel um, shame around it. I think that I did for a long time, felt bad, but um, I think we can recognize that there are practices that we all can connect to practices that probably align more with with who we are, where we come from. Um, and yes, that's just one small, small thing I want to, to note. And just, it's adjusting, it's pivoting as you learn. As you learn more, you adjust and you pivot from there. Um, and it definitely feels a lot more meaningful when you connect to things that are linked to your homeland or ancestry or heritage or family lineage or whatever, um, or that are easily accessible to um, 
where you live, right? We're all kind of more aware of those sorts of things anyways. So yes, uh, happy altering. <laughs> happy uh, creating sacred spaces for yourself. If you've already, I feel like many of you that are listening to this have like either already do this, right? Or you're like, oh yeah, I've been doing that for quite some time. <laughs> oh, those little collections on my <laughs> my um, windowsill, interesting. Yeah, oh, that do feel really important. I do get a sense of something when I look at them. So um, that's what you're doing, you're altering. Um, you're creating altars. And again, there's no wrong way to alter. It's a, a wonderful practice to in, feel into yourself intuitively about what feels good to you, what visually feels good to you, what um, ancestrally feels good to you, what um, spiritually feels good to you, That things that represent those things for you. It's a wonderful wee practice to start. So have fun with it. I'd love to see and hear all about what you come up with or what you create or ones that you already have. Um, yeah, you can let me know over on Instagram um, and or send me a wee message or a wee photo, you know, through the various ways that you can get a hold of me. I would love to see them. So thank you for joining me. You can find out more about how we can maybe work together through one to one coaching or through um, a one off tarot reading, um, as well as through the membership um, area that's just opening up. Um, where you can, £10 a month, you can join us and get all this kind of stuff with a lot more detail. Coach, It's called Self-Coaching with the Tarot and it is a really lovely, wonderful space if this feels like up your alley for, for exploring for yourself. Um, I'll see you next week where I will get into that very interesting concept of living altars. Thanks very much. See you next week. As promised, a little look and glimpse at my own altar. I'm not going to explain all the wee bits to you because a lot of them are quite special and sacred to me. Um, but I've got a variety. I've got my little thing for burning there. And I've got um, my crystals and my tarot cards for the month and the year um, reminders. I've got lots of lovely little nature things some my son has given me. And some I found myself that just represent things that are important to me and yeah, little family photos and things like that. So very simple, um, easy to lay out, easy to maintain, but is very, very powerful and meaningful to me. Mm -hmm.